journalist Dawn Neeson and the broadcaster and writer Edward Adu with us this morning. Very good morning to both of you. Nice to see you both. Good morning. Bright and doing? alert at this um, very early hour. Good to see. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, first of all, let's kick off um, with the front page of The Times, shall we? Dawn, I know you wanted to talk about this. This is hard on the heels of the High Court ruling that the government could go ahead with its first deportation flight uh, to Rwanda on Tuesday. Um, the Times have got an interesting angle on it. What are they saying? Absolutely. Um, this is a, an exclusive for the Times and the Mail today, so work that one out. But it is our own Prince Charles has privately described the government's policy to send migrants to Rwanda as appalling. Um, Prince Charles is particularly upset at the moment and frustrated by our own Boris Johnson and Peter Patel's asylum policy, as he's due to represent the Queen at a Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Kigali uh, in Rwanda, which is the capital of Rwanda, later this month. Um, and uh, as you've just said, quite rightly, Anna, the High Court did say that the, uh, the flights could go ahead. They were illegal despite the challenge and we don't know how many are going to be on that flight at the moment but I think there have been 10,000 migrants that have been legally crossed the channel uh, already this year which is a, a record high for this time of year and I think, I think it's probably 100 maybe on this flight we don't know yet I mean there is a, a legal challenge uh, an appeal going into the, the High Court judgment yesterday but I mean Prince Charles I mean he does has history in talking out about things. I mean, you remember those uh, famous spidery letters he wrote to uh, Tony Blair's government on everything from what the environment to architecture to whatever else was going on at the time. So he, he does have history, unlike his mom, the Queen, who has notoriously never complained, never explained, and has kept her political opinions very close to her. In fact, we, we, we pretty much know nothing about what the Queen thinks about any of the 15 Prime Ministers she's ever worked with. Um, so it's, it's interesting that Charles has spoken there. And what is very interesting about this story, Anna, is that um, they are not, it's not being denied. I mean, normally yeah. the palace would put out a statement saying, no, this is not true. But Clarence House, which is around the, the, the official spokespeople for Prince Charles, is saying, it's not at work. He hasn't denied it, which is very interesting. But, I mean, I, I think a lot of people are frustrated and confused by this policy. And um, the fact that Charles has spoken out about it, I think he's as annoyed a lot of people as, as well as sort of like um, people thinking that it is an inhumane policy backing his opinion. But the question is, should the future monarch be so outspoken on such a controversial issue as this. Well, yeah, I mean, he no doubt would say it was in private, and as you say, not denied by the spokesperson, but uh, they did make yeah. it clear that he wasn't trying to influence government policy. But it'd be quite interesting to see if uh, this does get picked up and it does uh, move, mm. you know, move the, the, the story on at all. Um, Edward, let's move on to um, a, another story that's made a couple of the front pages, actually. You've picked out the Daily Telegraph's take on it. And this is um, a plan we're told we're going to hear more about on Monday, Boris Johnson uh, taking a look at uh, the way we, we grow our food in this country. And there are so many issues around this subject, aren't there? We've got all the food security issues because of the war in Ukraine, but also rising prices, which is really uh, hitting people hard at the moment. Indeed, Anna, and this is a plan which apparently is the first which has been unveiled in 75 years of food strategy. Uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is going to uh, announce this on Monday, and it's connected really because of the uh, increased prices, the cost of living uh, with, with food prices in Ukraine. Now, um, farmers have been urged to um, put more resources into fruit and vegetables. And I walked into my local supermarket two weeks ago, and I, use, I I'm a big fan. I love my chicken. And like chicken thighs are usually about sort of two fifty three pounds for my local supermarket. It's up to nearly five pounds. Now, for, for me to think twice about po possibly buying sort of two or three, you've got to think about families, you know, on the breadline who are struggling and who can't even afford to buy uh, a, a pack of chicken thighs. Now, it's um, the story also talks about um, there's going to be um, eligibility for seasonal migrant um, for, for, for workers, for visas, and also there's a proposal for schools, prisons, and hospitals to be required to offer a vegan meal option. So it's it's beyond the strategy of trying to get you know, farmers to, to do more. But again, I think most people will be questioning how is this going to be done and how is it going to bring the, the cost down? Because it's not just about 
the, the cost of food, the petrol is spiralling out of control. And I think it, it's it's a crucial time now, possibly for full government to think, look, how can we make, how can we ensure that people are not, not paying more because yeah. you know as i mentioned walking into into the supermarket and seeing the increased cost of of, of chicken it's not just chicken there's other items of food which are just be th- through the roof just yeah, yeah. in terms of the increase increases and of course the petrol price is affecting the price as well because it pushes up the cost of transportation doesn't it the guardian doesn't seem yeah. very impressed with this though does it dawn i mean uh, edward outlined some of the, the plans they say that the the strategy could have gone a lot further and the question i guess is how immediately is it going to make a difference to the prices because people are suffering right now well, this is the this is the problem. I mean, this is a white paper that Edward has quite rightfully pointed out. It's due to be unveiled on Monday. The Guardian is obviously going to be very critical of Boris Johnson and the government. That is what they do, um, and they are saying that the PM's food strategy has is a huge missed opportunity. Now, the the government commissioned restauranter Henry Dimbleby to make recommendations about what we could do with the um, the, the, the inflation, as, as Edward said, the price is going up. And he made recommendations that said sort of like, we need to tackle uh, expanding free school meals um, and a 30% reduction in meat and dairy consumption in this country. Now, The Guardian is saying that the white paper are ignoring all of these things. It is, there's no mention of the uh, um, the soaring cost of food, um, childhood hunger, obesity, or the climate emergency, Guardian's word, not mine. Um, and so the, the, the Guardian are saying that more needs to be done, as you quite rightly say, more needs to be done now, Anna. I mean, you, you know, the WITCH survey recently have, have proven that 300 basic food products have risen in price by more than a fifth over the past two years. Now, obviously, we've had the pandemic and the war in Ukraine has it's literally halted our own grain supplies. I mean, Putin is literally holding, a, you know, starving the world as part of his policy. So, I mean, the, this report comes out and it's saying that, you know, we, we are going to use more. 50, 57% of British produce comes from 33% of agricultural land. So the government is saying that we need to use more of our own agricultural land, which yeah. is a good thing. It's, it's it's really probably not going to be enough to help families, as Edward's quite rightly pointed out, that are suffering now. Okay, and, and of course, we may see more and more of these kind of announcements, Edward, can't we? As, mm-hmm. uh, as uh, Boris Johnson is is trying to, to move on, as he says, he says after the confidence vote this week, he wants to draw a line and and try and uh, get people back on side. And the eye picks up on this, doesn't business it? as usual. Yeah, he says business as usual, absolutely, but but not according to the eye. They're saying that uh, those rebels aren't going anywhere. What what exactly are they? they No, so what they're saying is that they're kind of waiting for the reaction to the uh, by-elections in Tiverton and and, uh, uh, Honington and also Wakefield. So um, what they want to do is they want to kind of use the similar tactics used to oust uh, Theresa May. Now, apparently, this is how they're going to do it. 65 local party chairmen um, uh, are going to call a general meeting and then they will decide what will happen to the prime minister. Apparently, it, it, it may nothing may come of it, but again, it's the threat from the rebels who are kind of waiting to see what happens with, with the results. And I mean, clearly, the, 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 they, they're still sort of angered, there's still indifference within the party, and the, those rebels will, will do what they can in order to try and get the, the prime minister out. But you know, as, a, as, as I mentioned, you just pointed out rightly a couple of minutes ago, it's business as usual. I mean, with all these other uh, policies in place. Obviously, the Prime Minister earlier in the week talking about the right to buy, the, the initiative to try and to make sure that people who are with housing associations, to, to make sure that I think he's trying to do everything in his power to ensure that, look, it's business as usual. We've got to move on. You know, the vote of no confidence. I'm in. We've got to keep moving. OK. Um, and a quick look at the express, shall we, before we go, um, Dawn? Just got time to talk about how more and more people are thinking, do you know what, I'm not going to bother going abroad. There looks like there's such chaos at airports. I'm worried about my flight being cancelled. I'm going I'm to have my holiday at home. Absolutely, Anna. And, you know, I, I, you know I'm with people on this. I'm, I'm thinking now I'm, I really want to go abroad where you've got guaranteed weather, but I really I just can't face the fact of the airport chaos and 
queues and luggage problems. I just really can't face it, so I'm thinking of doing this myself. However, the good news is that temperatures are set to soar to uh, in the 80s by next weekend, and bookings um, um, across all sectors, hotels, camping, cottages in this country, okay. have soared by up, up to 88%. So, and it's good for the economy that we're all staying home and spending money here. Well, that's true. That's very interesting. We will talk about your holiday in the, in the next hour, Edward, no doubt. You will both be back, but for the moment, we must leave it there. Do stay with Thank us. Thank you. Lots more coming up.